Hello, and welcome to this module on the OCI DNS service. After completing this lesson, you should be able to describe the OCI DNS service that is available throughout the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. You should also understand the process for configuring DNS within your tenancy. The Oracle Cloud DNS service is a highly scalable global AnyCast network that assures high site availability and low latency. This network is deployed on top of a global IP network consisting of 20 existing facilities and connectivity from a mix of tier one internet service providers. The network has been split into two diverse constellations to provide active-active failover between constellations in the event of a catastrophic failure. Within each, each constellation, we distribute traffic to multiple data centers providing global active-active load balancing using the AnyCast routing technique. Queries via the AnyCast technique allow the fastest of the entire networks to answer the query. This network allows OCI DNS to offer its customers an industry-leading level of service and reliability. The network continues to grow and add more points of presence as time goes by. This results in a superior end-user experience when utilizing the service on top of OCI. By configuring OCI DNS, enterprise and business customers can connect their DNS queries to various kinds of assets, such as OCI compute, as well as third-party and private assets. Operators can manage their own DNS records for both cloud and non-cloud resources. OCI DNS is used when zones need to be exposed to the internet for name resolution. The OCI DNS solution offers a complete set of functions for zone management within the user interface. That means it's possible to create zones within the in the tenancy. Zones are tenancy-wide, and along with IAM OCI DNS, they cross all regions. Users can also manage records from the console. It's, all, it's possible to import complete zones from the OCI DNS console in a situation where the customer may, may be migrating their on-premises DNS to the cloud. It's also possible to set up DNS as a secondary DNS uh, or name resolution service to facilitate zone transfers from the primary DNS service. This is actually a unique feature of OCI, whereas many of our competitors uh, offer their own DNS service as primary only, not as a secondary option. This, of course, helps facilitate migration efforts because the customer can continue to use their own on-premises DNS as the primary provider and use OCI DNS as the secondary provider. When they're ready to initiate the migration or the cutover, they simply promote the OCI DNS to primary, and they can either continue to use their on-premises DNS as secondary, or simply move all in and discontinue the use of their existing DNS providers. OCI DNS supports a wide variety of DNS records. The list on this particular slide is not inclusive of every option available. However, this does include many of the more commonly used DNS record types, such as a record, which is pointing a domain name to an, an address, a specific IP address, uh, quadruple A or AAAA, which is an IPv6 record, uh, CNAME, which is the, uh, the function of pointing one DNS name to resolve to another DNS name, and several other options here. OCI DNS also supports an alias record type, which is a specific DNS construct within OCI. It allows users to map various OCI resources like compute, network, database, and storage to a third party or private asset. The alias record acts similar to a C name, but the difference is that they can use an alias to point to the apex record of a zone. Uh, the apex record being the domainname.com domain name uh, where there's no other you know, subdomain like www or login dot or something along those lines. Uh, typically, the apex record of a zone must be an IP address, unless, of course, you're using the alias feature within OCI. As it currently stands, the OCI DNS uh, service has integrated a number of features that are readily available within the Dyn Global DNS network. This integration continues to grow and evolve over time as we add additional features natively within the OCI console. To use the OCI DNS service, we would start by creating a zone. 
Now, at this point, the customer would need to have an existing domain name that they have registered through one of the internet registrars. And they would simply create the zone and point that to their uh, existing or, or configure their existing domain name. In order to add a zone, we simply click the Add Zone button. We enter the zone name, uh, as in mydomain.com, as an example and then specify the zone as either primary or secondary. Once the zone has been created, we would be able to go in and create additional records at that point, or that would be our actual DNS records. Uh, the zone, once created, is also going to provide the customer with a number of existing name servers. These are represented in the zone as ns dot something else. The customer would use these name servers to configure their third-party registrar so that DNS requests for the, the specified domain would be forwarded to the OCI DNS servers for resolution. OCI DNS also offers both private pool and vanity name servers. Private pool allows enterprise customers to host their domain names and DNS zones under a dedicated pool of IP addresses that are segregated away from those of other customers in order to reduce the risk of external issues affecting their websites. As an example, if multiple customers are in the same pool and one customer's zone comes under a DDoS attack or distributed denial of service, the other customers in the pool may have their DNS performance impacted until the DDoS attack is resolved. A vanity name server allows enterprises to rename the OCI name servers with their own branding. So by default, all OCI customers will be hosted on the OCI name servers. Using standard tools, users can det determine that the customer's assets are hosted by OCI DNS. To avoid this, customers could utilize their own branding. So instead of using the ns1.pxx.dns.oraclecloud.net, the customer could use something like ns1.pxx mydomain.net. This would help abstract or obfuscate away the fact that uh, the DNS service is provided by OCI. Some additional benefits of the OCI DNS service. Uh, we're operating on a DNS network that has been in production, has been leading the industry in fact, for over 10 years. It's leveraged by thousands of customers, large and small, enterprise, business, and web properties. Support for OCI and other cloud endpoints such as Azure and AWS and private assets, including cloud, CDNs, or content distribution networks and data centers. OCI DNS consistently offers the lowest query latency performance found almost anywhere in the industry. It also offers industry-leading propagation time to ensure fast response to DNS changes. The DNS propagation happens globally in less than 60 seconds, oftentimes happening in under 30 seconds. And given the support for both primary and DNS services, this again makes it unique to any cloud provider currently available today. OCI DNS also offers in the industry's most accurate geolocation data set. It's created specifically for steering internet traffic. It offers built-in DDoS protection, again, distributed denial of service, and it's the most standards compliant DNS platform available today. Stay tuned after the module for a quick demo of setting up uh, DNS records, and we'll look at how quickly those DNS records can propagate globally. So in this lesson, we learned the following. We talked about the OCI DNS service, the different features and options available, and we looked at the process of configuring an OCI DNS zone. Now let's take a quick look at how this actually works live. Now, once I've logged into my OCI console, I'll use the navigation menu to navigate to networking and DNS. From here, you'll see that I actually have a zone created, but if we wanted to create a new zone, we would simply click create zone. Again, we would specify either manual or import if we're importing from an existing, perhaps on-premises zone, and we'll type in our domain name. At this point, there's no need to include things like www or login dot or any other subdomain. We would add that later as an actual uh, A record or C name record. Last option here, zone type. We can either set this as primary or secondary, depending upon our 
intended configuration. So once that zone has been created, we could select that zone and we would see information about the zone. We would see the name servers that we would use to configure our registrar to be able to forward those requests. And I can begin to create records. So this is where I would point uh, my applications to resolve to a particular IP address. I have a few records here already, and these actually point to a load balancer. So let's create a new record. Now, before we add a new DNS record, let's go ahead and open a new browser tab and just test the IP address of our web server to make sure that we're getting a sample web page. So I will paste that IP address in here. And there we have it. Hello world. Welcome to my sample website, trainingdemo.quixly.com. That is the DNS name we're going to use. So let's navigate back and go ahead and create our record. So the first thing we'll do is select our record type. And for this, we're just going to use an IPv4, an A record. And we're going to give it the name training demo. And it automatically populates the rest of the, of the domain. So trainingdemo.quixly.com. Now we have the option here also to adjust the TTL or time to live. By default, it's set to 3600 seconds. And this is the amount of time that the DNS resolver or revolver cache around the internet will hold on to this record or cache this record before discarding and attempting to re-resolve. If we have a, a set of resources where IP addresses might be changing frequently uh, or we're rotating from one load balancer to another if we're doing a uh, constant or, or frequent migrations of our application code, it might be necessary to shorten the TTL. So we would do that by simply unlocking and we would reduce that say to 360 seconds and away we go. Now the last thing we'll do is put in our IP address. Just need the actual IP, not the whole web address. So we'll go ahead and submit that. And before that address or that record gets propagated, you'll notice the state is created, but we have to go ahead and publish changes. So we'll go ahead and we'll publish our changes and it'll show us a list if we've created multiple records and then we publish all at once, it will give us a list of all the records. We actually have the option to deselect if we have multiple records but only wish to publish a couple of them. So we'll confirm that, we will publish changes, and now the DNS network is going to be propagating this to all of the OCI and Dyne owned DNS points of presence around the globe. It does take a couple of seconds to process the request, and it will initiate propagation at this point, and it might take anywhere again from 30 to 60 seconds. So we'll pause here for just a minute. We'll allow this to propagate. And we'll come back and test it in just a moment. Okay, so it's been a couple of seconds. Let's go ahead and reopen that browser tab. We'll paste in our trainingdemo.quixly.com. We'll press enter and voila, we just resolved this new DNS entry that we created and it only took about 20 to 30 seconds to propagate that all around the interwebs. That's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back soon.